Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. I'm Sister Naomi. And I am Sister Miriam. And we'll be hosting Sabbath School Online. Let's start by greeting everyone who joined us this lovely morning. Welcome to Sabbath School, children, children. Welcome to Sabbath School, children. Welcome to Sabbath School, teachers, teachers. Welcome to Sabbath School, teachers. Welcome to Sabbath School, Jesus, Jesus. Welcome to Sabbath School, Jesus. Welcome to Sabbath School, everyone, everyone. Welcome to Sabbath School, everyone. I hope you had an amazing week with your family and friends. I know that God has been good to me this week and I praise him for it. What's your praise report for this week? Now that we've welcomed everyone, let's pray. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessed Sabbath day that you have been with each and every single one of us. Father God, we ask that we may be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask that, Lord, as we come together as one in Christ, we ask that, Lord, that you will bless our families, bless our friends. Keep us from harm's way. We ask that you will allow us, Lord, to increase in your word and your wisdom and your truth. We ask that we may continue to be the light for others and we may speak of your good name of your death, your resurrection, and your coming. We ask that, Lord, that you bless our family and friends. Keep us underneath your watchful eye. Bless this day. Bless each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, I humbly do pray. Amen. 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 At this time, we wish all those who are celebrating this birthday this week a very happy birthday. We pray that God will continue to bless you as you grow in his grace and favor. Before we start, this would be a good time to pause the video and begin writing out this week's lesson and the memory verbs. Ready? Ready? Let's, Let's begin. begin. Hi everyone, it's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called The Day Jesus Died. The memory verse is one of my favorites. It's from John chapter 3, verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Today's message is we serve God when we share his love with others. Do you love someone so much that you would do anything for them? God loves us so much that he sacrificed his only son to save us, and Jesus was willing to die for us. Jesus' terrible night of insults and beatings was finally over. Now the Roman soldiers were taking him and two thieves outside the city to crucify them. Simon had carried Jesus' cross to the place of crucifixion. The awful deed would soon be done. The Bible simply says they crucified him. The people who lived when the Gospels were written knew what that meant. They knew crucifixion caused a slow, painful death. They knew a crowd would often follow the prisoners to the place of execution, shouting insults along the way. They knew soldiers would nail the hands and feet of the prisoners to the cross. They knew those soldiers would drop the cross into a hole in the ground. And yes, they knew it was the worst possible way to die. The soldiers nailed him to the cross, then placed his cross between the crosses of two thieves. The crowd that had followed them out of the city gathered around, the mocking that had been going on all night continued. If you really are the Son of God, come down from that cross, one shouted. He saved others, but he can't save himself, another sneered. Come down from that cross and we'll believe in you, another said scornfully. If God wants him, let God rescue him, laughed yet another. After all, he said he was the Son of God. And so it went, 
on and on. Even a thief who was crucified with him shouted insults at him. Although the pain and mocking were terrible, something even worse was happening to Jesus. When he came to earth to die for us, Jesus took our sins on himself. That means that the guilt of every person who would ever live was resting on him as he hung on the cross. The sense of sin was so great that Jesus felt God had left him forever. That feeling of abandonment by his father caused Jesus to cry out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And even though he thought he might never see his father again, Jesus was still willing to die for us. But God the Father had not abandoned Jesus. God and all the angels of heaven were watching and suffering with him. Even the earth reacted to Jesus' agony. Darkness covered the area for three hours, and when Jesus finally died, the earth shook and the rocks split. Do you love anyone so much you would be willing to die a horrible death to save them? That's how much Jesus loves you. He loves you so much there is nothing he wouldn't do to save you. That's the core of Christianity. It's the reason for every song we sing, every prayer we pray, everything we do. That love is the message we are asked to share with others. Who doesn't need to know that they are loved that much? Who couldn't help loving a God who would do absolutely anything to save them? Tell someone you know. Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy Fullwood for Gracelink.net. Animation and artwork by Giorgo Godoy. Audio is post-produced by Faith Toe at Studio El Piso in Singapore. The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. The audio engineer was Maurice Bailey. Welcome back, boys and girls. I hope that you enjoyed today's story, The Day Jesus Died. Our story can be found in Matthew 27, 34 through 56. Matthew 27, 34 through 56. They gave him sour wine mingled with gale to drink, but when he had tasted it, he would not drink. Then they crucified him and divided his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them. As for my clothing, they cast lots. Sitting down, they kept watch over him there, and they put up over his head the accusation written against him. This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Then the two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and another on the left. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, You who destroyed the temple... And built it in three days. Save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priest, also mocking with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he is the king of the Jew, Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him with the same thing. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama shabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there when they heard that said, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and offered it to him to drink. Then the rest said, Let him alone. Let us see if Eli will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split. And graves were open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly this was the Son of God. 
and many women who followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, were there looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. Mark fifteen twenty one through 39. Mark 15, verses 21 through 39. Then they compelled a certain man, Simeon, a Syrian, the father of Alexander and Rufus, as he was coming out of the country and passing by to bear his cross. And they brought him to the place Golgotha, which was translated place of a skull. Then they gave him wine mingled with mirth to drink, but he did not take it. And when they crucified him, they divided his garments, casting lots for them to determine what every man should take. Now it was the third hour, and they crucified him, and the inscription of his accusation was written above, the king of the Jews. With him they also crucified two robbers, one on his right and the other on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled, which says, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priest also mocking among themselves with the scribes said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified with him revealed him. Now when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama shabachani, which was translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood by when they heard that said, Look, he is calling for Elijah. Then some ran and filled a sponge full of sour wine and put it on a reed, offered it to him to drink, saying, Let him alone. Let us see if Eli will come to take him down. Luke 23, 26 through 49. Luke 23, verse 26 through 49. Now as they led him away, they laid hold of a certain man, Simeon a Syrian, who was coming from the country, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. And a great multitude of people followed him, and women who also mourned and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming in which they will say, Blessed are the barren, wombs that never bore, and breasts which never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains fall on us and the hills cover us for if they do these things in the greenwood what will be done in the dry there were also two others criminals led with him to be put to death and when they had come to the place called calvary there they crucified him and the criminals one on the right hand and the other on the left then jesus said father forgive them for they do not know what they do and they divided his garments and cast lots, and the people stood looking on. But even the rulers with them sneered, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ, the chosen of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who was hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing as you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Surely I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. So when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And the whole crowd who came together to that sight, seeing what had been done, beat their breasts and returned. But all his acquaintances and the woman who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. And John nineteen sixteen through 30. John nineteen sixteen through 30. Then he delivered him to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of a skull, which in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him. 
one on either side, and Jesus in the center. Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Therefore the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they have crucified, Jesus took his garments and made four parts, to each soldier a part and also a tunic. Now the tunic was without seam, woven from the top in one piece. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, who it shall be, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothes they cast lot. Therefore the soldiers did these things. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clodopus, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on high sop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Today's memory verse is John 3, verse 16. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. In today's lesson, we learned that Jesus died. After approximately 33 years of life, Jesus died on a tree between two real criminals. Was this how God planned for everything to go? Jesus, who was born in a major, pursued by a king who wanted to kill him at the age of two, taught the priest at the age of 12, who was baptized and baptized others, turned water into wine, healed people, and raised others from the dead, and he dies on a cross? Were the disciples right? Was Jesus the Messiah? The followers of Jesus were despondent, sad, and felt betrayed by Jesus' death. They thought that this was the end of the story, but they were wrong. Although Jesus had told them time and time again he would come back in three days, they didn't understand. They thought Jesus would save them from their problems, the Romans who controlled the lands. And yet those same Romans crucified Jesus after being given over by the Jews. They had thought their hope had died with Jesus. But that is a story for next week. For this week, we are to remember why Jesus died. God so loved the world so much that he sent his favorite and only son to die for our sins. Jesus takes our sins on his body that was broken, bruised, beaten, and battered for our salvation and his blood that was spilled over and over that it may cover us, heal us, and make us clean. Jesus didn't come to save the Jews from the Romans or us from our physical problems but he came to provide us a way to cross the spiritual barrier that separates us from God forever. Jesus died that we may live with God in heaven one day, if we so choose to follow him. Parents, please take the time to answer the following questions with your children. Question one, did God love us enough to send and sacrifice his son for all of us sinners? Question two, why did he love us so much? Does God want everyone to know about this? Question three. Do you think Jesus would have gone through all the pain and suffering and then try to keep us out of heaven? Does Jesus want everyone there? Question four. Are you willing to make a small sacrifice to share God's love with others after Jesus and God have made big sacrifices for you? In summary, God loves us so much that he would send his only beloved son to die on the cross for the entire world. The day Jesus died was a terribly sad day, but it's a reminder that God loves us so much that he became a man, lived among us, and died for us. Jesus wasn't set to save the Jews or the Christians, but everyone, however not everyone knows about Jesus yet. So we can serve others by telling of God's great love and telling them about Jesus. Isn't that awesome? If we want to serve Jesus by telling others about him, we must accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. 
we can only tell about Jesus if we know Jesus. So if you want to serve Jesus and ask Jesus into your heart, bow your heads and close your eyes with us. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for being with us and keeping us and watching over us. Lord, we ask you into our hearts that we might come closer to you. Lord, help us to bring ourselves closer to you. Help us to know you and to follow you, that we might testify of your good works and tell others all about you. Lord, help us to serve others the way you served us, by sharing your love, mercy, and grace with everyone that we meet, our friends, family, and even our enemies. Lord, we thank you for hearing us and for being with us and keeping us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for joining us in Sabbath School Online. Just like Bob and Larry always says, God made you special and he loves you very much. Shalom. Shalom.